yo, what's up? This is T, and I just wanna, uh, in this video, I just wanna build a track from scratch. So I'm just gonna build something from scratch. Uh, probably like a a boom bap type, you know, trap feel or something like that. So I'm gonna use all the native stuff too. I'm not gonna go out of the way of that. So first of all, I'm gonna start with a chord progression. I think I'm gonna use GMS. And I'm going to go into GMS and go into bases. I'm going to click this bank right here. All right, I'm going to click bases. That whatever. And then I'm going to go to leads and synths. And um we can make <clears throat> chords out of one of these or a pad or whatever or anything like that. And um or we can just do something really basic with this but I think I'm just gonna go to something in here and let me plug in my piano real quick alright <clears throat> Okay, so let's build out a chord progression. I'm going to use the chord codes. I'm going to use chord codes to just build out any chord, basically. I'm going to start... Oh, God, that was loud. I'm sorry. All right, my bad. Let's go. Let's use somewhere around in here. So I'm going to use... I'm going to go by the major... or I'm going to go by the minor uh, scale code or whatever. So it's going to go... um. A triad, so it's gonna go seven, six, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. So we put it on the seven, four, and zero, and I'm actually gonna move that to let's see, actually, yeah, it sounds fun. Let's pull that out and turn our melody down a little. I mean, what am I saying? My melody, Jesus Christ, let's turn our BPM down. I'm out of my mind right now, anyways. All right, let's go to. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. Okay, let's go to 90 BPM. Somewhere around that area. 94. And let's pull that out for a bar. And I'm going to clone that all the way over. Just, you know, all the way over really quick. And I think I'm going to add the ninth to this, which is, um, so we go 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So, if it's a major, it's 11. If it's a minor, it's 10. Now, let's um, see where we want this other chord. Let's voice these differently. Let's click on them, and um, let's just click on those three notes. This is kind of random, and just hit up. I don't think I like how I voiced it like that. Let me do it a little differently. Um, I don't know if I like that. Let me move 
that back down and let's let's build this a different way. Let's not do it like that. Let's What I want to do is <clears throat> lower this one and move it to like right about there. And do the same thing. I think I'm going to do the same thing and change the notes maybe. that at all actually so <laughs> let me put that back there let me put that back okay let's build out the ninth again or, i mean we already did let's build out the we could build out the next one and that's we would go to 14 in the major so we can go 11 um 12 13 14 and now i'm gonna start voicing this because we're starting to build a nice lush chord. I think I'm going to voice that differently now. It'll slice and delete whatever's shorter. All right, now that's that'll loop correctly. And we can build this out again. Click it and then shift that down. So highlight it, control shift, highlight, um, let go of the control, hit shift, and then um, highlight it. It's a little complex if I explain it. Highlight it, um, hit shift, okay, and then hit control down, and that'll do that, okay. So let's just delete that second one I did. But, anyways, hopefully that didn't confuse you. Hopefully you got that. And then lower octave two, which gives it. <clears throat> you know, a full, you know, um, now we got low frequencies and high frequencies, just with this pro chord progression. I'm going to lower those down so it's not so piercing. <laughs> for other sounds but we can use I mean you can use other sounds but um, I'm just gonna do it with this one and now let's go to pattern two let's put that in the in the playlist let's go to pattern one put that in the playlist let's go to pattern two now let's add some drums over this um let's go to packs and see what we'd want let's play it <laughs> This is there's no way there's gonna be like a boom bat 
type beat, but it's still gonna we're still gonna just work with it. I'm just gonna do whatever and uh see how it comes out. So let's just, let's just add some something to it. Let's add a kick first, I think. And I'm gonna go to you know somewhere in here and just So it sounds clipping right now, and we'll fix that. Um, and we can real quick. That way, delete the sample. That way, that's um, not going crazy. Now let's run that there. Let's double click this, and highlight those channels. You can, you know, if they're not highlighted, just double click any one of them, and they'll highlight all of them. Then go to the mixer, and then right click, channel routing, route selected channels from this track. Okay, now. <laughs> That's pretty low, and you can see it, you know what I'm saying, so, uh, let's see what it sounds like in context. Let's add a, let's add a clap. couple claps all right I just added three and now I'm gonna add a hi-hat I think um let's see now let's add a snare first something that matches and we might not use it depending it's all about uh sound selection you know what I'm saying so like you can't make a hip hop sound. You can't make an old school hip hop beat with, you know, um, EDM sounds. There's no way. So it's all about picking the right sounds for your track. So I mean, just think of the genre you want to create, and if you need help on what the sounds, you know, actually take to make that actual genre, then um, just go over our videos and you know the uh, and keep watching because um. We go into how the sound sound selection works for certain tracks. So let's keep going for this one. I'm just gonna make this, you know, um, trap beat, hip hop, slow slow beat. You know, so so far it reminds me of like I'm not really sure. I'm not sure yet. Let's keep building it. section snares and the drums the use
know, really build up stuff without anything expensive. I like that sound, alright. Okay, sorry guys. Oh, Jesus. Okay, let me turn down my master volume for a second. Oh, it's horrible. Alright, hold on. I'm gonna go to the symbols in the other pack, I think, and reverse one of them. I want a long symbol. That one kind of sounds good. Let's see what it sounds like in reverse. Let's open it and hit reverse and hit C, middle C. Takes a little bit to like swell up. Let's see what other ones sound like before we use that one. Let's delete that one real quick. Um. use that one in the mix as a regular symbol and then let's put it after the fourth bar and shift it a little bit off the grid same thing with our kicks we want to do that see it sounds a little loud and it might not be tuned to correct to it let's tune it let's pitch it up a little bit so we can I want to tune it up a little. It sounds like I need to tune it up, up a little. And I'm going to lower the volume in the mixer. I'm going to double click <clears throat> these and dis deselect these two. And then route that from this one and so on from this track. So we can just easily put those in there. And I'm going to lower down that symbol and pan it to the right. I'm going to pan that... That little ping um, to the left. The clap can go, or the, um, yeah, the clap can go to the right a little. Let's actually throw it to the left. Kick can go right. And just some quick panning. Now we can add, let's add a reverse symbol like we were gonna. actually hear this one in reverse the same one yeah let's use that one okay so that's easy and um, instead of just doing it like that <clears throat> we can just time it instead so we should just time it and delete that pattern so sorry about that now we can that's just this is an easier way to do this I mean we can go into the piano roll and create a new pattern and put it in there and do it in a separate pattern but we might as well just do it in the same one it's easier so um let's go to the same pattern pattern four let's go link this to nine real quick might as well and first let's put that in where we want it right after the uh right you know right where we want that symbol we want that to be right where uh after that bar so what i'm gonna do is actually pull it out and pull this out too and i'm just gonna time it so i'm gonna time it by Ear. And there's so many ways you can do this. You don't have to do it this way, so. Oh, 
Whoops. Okay, so we want it. I think it needs to go a little bit over. Let's see if right here works. And that works a little better. I might even want to go one more. Now let's go into the piano roll of, of, of this one and shift it just a little bit back. So let's turn our snap to grid to none. Oops. And shift it back a little bit. Um, now you highlight it, in no and I'm in none on my snap to grid. I'm hitting shift. Um, let me pause it real quick. Hit shift and then left twice on your keyboard. So the left arrow. And you can see it micro moving. If I zoom back, zoom in really close, you'll see it. So if I zoom in really close. You'll see me moving it. Okay, so I moved it one, two, three, four. Well, the first time I moved it two, but so there's the two, the first initial moves I did, and then here's the next two I'm gonna do to adjust it, you know, to micro adjust that so we can get that symbol to line up right. And I think it needs a little bit more, so let's go two more. I think that's decent enough. I mean, we could sit here all day and do it. And now what I'm going to do is I want to automate that pattern to pan. So to do this, we're going to have to um we're going to have to actually automate both of these. Actually, you know, we don't even have to automate it. Let's just set this one left and this one right. And leave it like that. That's good enough. So we kind of get that, um, you know, that left to right effect panning with that. So that's that's something. And then um, now we can add, and I should be coloring these. I'm going to random color these real quick. That just keeps you, you know, not confused. I should be naming them too, but that's okay. Um, you should definitely, definitely name your stuff every time. That way when you're getting into a big project, you know. Anyways, let's go to pattern 5 and build a, a melody for this real quick. Using the same... Uh, whatever we had in GMS. So I'm gonna just going to clone that GMS into a new pattern. And I'm going to change that pattern to 9. Or no, I'm not going to go to 9. I'm going to 10. Okay, and just because it's in pattern 10, you know, hopefully it doesn't confuse you, but, you know, this is just the point in time we're doing the melody. It just so happens to land on the mixer 10 because, actually, yeah, we can leave it on 10 because everything else is on 9. And this one here is on... uh nine but we just haven't named it and that's the reverse symbol so we can name it real quick so it's not confusing us because it will confuse you if you have all these you know what i mean so <clears throat> so this is our uh melody pattern so let's go into that and let's go to the piano roll real quick and now it should be already on your gms and we have this really low now, if we go back to our um, pattern one, where this is built out. Now, we built it using a scale, which is... I'm not too sure of the naming of the scales 100% when I do them. But we did use a scale, and we used... Let's see. I'm going to name the notes that we used. So we used A, and I'm not going to use that A. I'm going to use this A. Let's see. D, F... A, because we got it right here, and I think it's, okay, so I'm going to look at the whole pattern, right, and so we used C, that note's off, we're going to have to fix that, I don't know why that's off, D, and then there's that A up there, and then there's F, G, so that's our scale, okay, so we can use any of these notes, any of these notes right here, and what I'm going to do is hit control let me see control C I want to say control C and then go up to pattern 5 and control V and that'll paste them so if you didn't get that highlight all these control C okay go to pattern 5 control V and it'll paste them and I'm just gonna hit delete because I don't need the second one I just did but alright now we can go back to pattern 1 and delete those and that's how we just found our scale now we can use those notes to build out a melody. And <clears throat> if we go back to pattern five in our piano roll, um, let's make sure, are these like lined up? They don't look like it. No, okay, so <clears throat> make sure, you know, um, they're not in the way. So let's move these way over here. Whoops. 
Um, I switched it over to bar mode. I, I didn't mean to clone those, but, you know, I'm going to set them, you know, 12 bars out of the way. That's, that's enough room for me to work with for now. Then what I'm going to actually do is clone these. And I just did by hitting shift and I, I clicked on them. And then I'm going to bring these um, down y using the octave jump or whatever by hitting control down. And then um, that'll give us, you know, a deeper understanding of what notes we can use. So I'm going to hit it actually one more time. And then there we go. So we can use these notes too as well down here. And that shows us what we can use in different octaves. And then we can even, even clone this whole entire thing and shift it all the way up. Whoops, I didn't clone it. Let me hit clone. Click it, shift, clone. Move it all the way up. And now we have a scale built out, you know, all the way up to our, that matches our song. So we can use these really high notes to build out a better melody. Let me move this real quick. Actually, I kind of like it there. <laughs> all right. So let's play our song. Let's play it in context and put that in there and we'll play it for a little bit and we'll kind of build a melody out of it. And there's a lot of stuff you can do with melody. There's mo you know you got to know about motifs. There's a lot of stuff to melody, but you know it's not complicated. It's what sounds good to you. So let's just build it out using our chord or our scale. And we can do like, you know, pretty basic stuff and it'll sound decent. So, um, let's see. Let's see. And I think I'm just going to kind of clone that over. I'm not trying to figure out. I'm not trying to make the greatest beat ever. But I'm just trying to cook up something. And show you a lot of things in the process as well. So I'm going to match these here. F and we got A. Alright, that one wasn't on the scale. And it sounded way out of place. And I just don't like that. I don't know why, but I don't. But um, anyways, let's just keep working with the scale we got. And it's okay to go out outside of the scale. But this is a good reference point. I said boom bap and I came up with this. It's terrible. But anyways. <laughs> um I mean it's all good. But I mean I'm just showing you ideas. And you know, I didn't even have an idea in my head when I went over this. That when I was um thinking about making this in my head, but or this video, but um <clears throat> And I think we can even like you know, we can kind of mess around with those with the tools and see what we can you know, find out. And you might not want to arpeggiate that crazy.
and you can kind of just mess around in here and see what is fun to do you know and there's a lot of other things you can do and you can change the range and all that that's what i like about this it really makes you think about you know how melody can work out with the arpeggiator and you wouldn't even think to program that in but it's you know the notes we use according to the scale and it sounds all right That's way too high. But we can change the scale and flip it and all that other stuff and change everything else. You know, I'm not a master on this whole thing, of course, but um, you know, there's a lot of fun stuff you can do. So let's leave it like that on two. We can pan it and mess with everything, you know. We can change the pitch and everything else, but we're not gonna. Uh, oh, I should have left it. My bad. Okay, I always do that. <laughs> Let me reset that to arpeggiate two. I think we were in, and I think that's all we did, real. I know we changed the time, but I mean that picks up the sound a little. Oh, jeez. like that and then actually what else I'm gonna do is maybe strum it or something um, we can do that if we want and there's not much to strum really but um, we can strum it actually you know you really can't y you should use it on chords that's what that's great for but um you know I'm just kind of messing around in here now and see what we can mess with Like who would you wouldn't think of that to come up with that? See, I just wouldn't think of that, and that's pretty cool. So let's um let's delete our scale. We don't need it no more, and I'm not gonna do anything too much more. So um. I think I'm gonna add like a couple more drums in maybe. And that'll be about it. Let's make sure this is lined up right. See, that's outside of there. And, you know, we don't really want that because it won't loop right when it comes to putting it in the playlist. All right, so I'm gonna drag this over. And um, how many bars did I pull that over? Let me, how many bars is this exactly? Let me just clone that, okay. And delete that. Now I didn't even put it up all the way, let me move that up really quick. Okay, now I'm gonna delete, let's see what we got here. We got a kick and a, um, we got the kick. I'm gonna delete that whole thing. And I'm gonna delete the chords. Let's add a, um, hi-hat. Let's go to the other hi-hat section. Let's just use that basic one. I always seem to click on that, but no, let's use a different one actually. Okay, I'm actually just gonna use that one. I'm gonna use that. 
I like that. And I'm gonna create an open hat, closed hat, open hat pattern for this. Um, let's go to pattern six and um, let's fill in each two steps. I think that's what I want to do. Now let's just put that where we want it. All right, and I'm just gonna leave it like that, I think. Um, and you know, that's pretty much it. You know, this is really basic. So um, let's move the chords over. Let's clone this actually whole thing over and make it build up a little bit. You know, let's delete four bars of the hi-hats and four bars of this. Um, let's delete everything. Let's slice everything. Um, let's see, maybe two bars or let's see, let me half a bar. Whoops. What did I just do? Let's slice everything a half a bar. Um, right before the first, you know, after well, technically, if we named it, it would be intro, verse, chorus, and so on, or whatever, however you had it. But right after this four bars, like if it would to be, you know, going into the verse or something, I'm gonna cut everything out, like right here. Let me go up all the way and cut that out. Um and highlight that and cut it and let me just switch back to the pencil highlight all that cut it out and that'll give us a break between the beat and let's cut off the hi-hats for whoops for a little bit we can leave two two bars in I mean why not so that's that, that way that has some hi-hat in it now let's play this Um, and I don't think I'm gonna do anything else, really. That's pretty much it. Alright, let me actually tune that 808, that this right here, down or up. I'm not sure what it needs. I think it needs to go up. Let me play it. Um. It needs to be up. So let me go back to the pattern. And we could sit around and mess around and pan that, but I'm not even gonna... Let's go to... Let's, let's bring a bass in, what I didn't do yet. Um, let's add a third GMS. Now let's add a 3XOC, whatever, 3XOSC. Now let's play that. Let's turn off oscillators 2 and 3. Um, by, I think we can go like that, and that turns them off. So that's the volume. And if it's all the way zero, it's turned off. So that always confuses me, but if you turn it off, that's helpful. Let's, now we got a sine wave. We can either have a sine wave, we uh, got to kind of think how we want to have our bass. And there's all kinds of waves. If you don't know about waves, we're going to have videos in the um, future, you know, explaining all these sound waves. So there's a, you know, um, <clears throat> a sine wave, a square wave, and then there's, you know, these other variations, a sawtooth wave um, and all that. So, and, um, whoops, my bad. And um, I think I'm just going to use a sine wave. And bring that in here into the track, and let's see. I'm going to go to pattern six. Now we got pattern six filled. Let's go to pattern seven and go to a lower octave. And we can use our scale if we want to build out, um, you know, our um, bass again if we want. Or we can go by ear, and I'm just going to 
quickly grab the scale again. That way we have a reference point. I mean, I could go by ear and I could do it easily, but um, control C, pattern seven, control V, and that clones it, go back to pattern one, delete that. Let's go back to pattern seven. Now we have this, and I don't think we're gonna be leaving that, whatever scale we're in. And that's pretty high, so let's go to low, a lower scale so it sounds like a bass. Maybe in the um, three, two, two octave. Make sure we're on our actual scale. Now we pulled it down, and I didn't even check, but you know that's our scale right here. But um, it's an A sharp um, scale, I I believe. H. I'm not good at naming scales, but you know there's a method of going over, and I'm gonna go over that in another video. And uh, anyways, I have it written down my notes somewhere. But anyways, um, let's get to this. I'm gonna. It's still pretty pretty high. Let's shift it one one octave down. Um, let's bring the velocity up. Let's go in the GMS and make this a little bit juicier of a sound. Oh, we're in 3S. Alright, my, my bad. Let's go into 3X. And let's turn up. Let's see what we can do to bring this higher. We can just actually just EQ it and not even mess with the plugin. Um, but I think I'm just going to leave it for now. I shouldn't even have messed with it. Anyways, let's put this in right here. That's where I want it. And I'm going to play some notes according to whatever you know according to what I like and that hi-hat could definitely go it's definitely not working but it's all right so let's go F A we can even use C um, it's right here there's a C right here um, we can use C down here if we want and let's see. Um, I don't know. G. We can use G. It's up here. Let me actually bring those up. They're pretty low. Okay, no, I don't like that. I'm going to bring them down again, but raise the notes a little bit. Bring that up to D. We, we got D in there. That's in our scale. Let's see, let's see. Okay, let's go higher in notes. This is too low. Let's see. We got D. I'm going to use that D now. I'm going to go up. Um, let's see. Let me move that over a little bit so we don't have to keep hearing that for so long. I'm just gonna clone that over. And um I'm just gonna leave it like that. I'm not even gonna do anything too much more specific. I'm gonna uh actually go ahead and start mixing this a little bit. And first of all, we gotta route our sounds that we haven't routed yet into the mixer. I'm gonna double click and um unclick all the other sounds by uh r uh right clicking them. And then I'm gonna go into the mixer and then just route from where we need to. Um then we got our bass in here. We gotta remember that's why it's really important to name what you're doing. So I'm gonna rename and hit bass. And then I'm gonna do it from here. Now I'm gonna channel route, select channel, route select the channels from this rack track. And now we got this. And um something's going on here. I think I might have done something wrong real quick. Hold on, let's see. We we got here. No, we're all good, okay. So now that we got our three uh, X O S C, I hate saying that. It's such a, I can't even say it. I don't know why. Anyways, all right, let's play that again, and I'm gonna EQ it and boost it up a little bit. Let's 
go to our first sounds, which is this, and why it's up there and I called it bass, I confused myself somehow. But anyways, let's rename that. Actually, okay, that's our melody. Now we need to rename that to melody, and it's our GMS2, and it just confused me a little bit. So hopefully I didn't confuse you guys, so I'm going to rename that to melody. Okay. And I'm gonna, uh. I'm gonna lower that down. That click can go down a little bit. Let's see what else we got. We got claps in here. We didn't even use many of them. I think we only used one of them. And we can even add those in and layer them. Let's see where they come in. And <clears throat> let's shift all those, you know, to where we want them. The more you shift them and the more off they sound, the more people it sounds like clapping. You know, it gives it an effect. Okay, now I'm going to go to... Let's see, I wanted to take that hi-hat and shift it a little bit. Here it is. Shift it off the grid and make it sound a little better. Okay, I'm gonna, um, let's see what else. I'm gonna start going back into mixing this. Let's bring that to the right. And then the chords can go to the left. And the kicks, the claps can go all over. I'm gonna spread them out everywhere. We got an 808 hi-hat, I'm gonna spread, I'm gonna bring it right, 10% right. This hi-hat can go left. Actually, it can go right with it. The bass can go a little lower. I'll go to the master and kind of just master it really, really quick. We didn't even go into depth in there, I'm telling you. We literally just scratched the surface. We didn't even do anything in mixing. There's a lot more to it. There's a lot more you can do um, in here. And I'm not going to really go into that, so I'm going to lower this down. Because we're pretty close to peaking. Let me go back into that heavy part. Now you can hear those claps giving us that feel. Let's spread one really hard and um, really hard left and really hard right for the claps. And that way it gives us another more dynamic now we got that crash that swell do we have that in there? I'm pretty sure we do reverse symbol is that it? let's lower that down that one because we already got the crash to low let's lower that down alright that's cool that's cool I'm gonna bring it more pan that a little more let's master it very lightly with, with um an EQ first I want to use Maximus so let me replace that with Maximus and I'm gonna solo it to the mids and we don't even have much mids here at this point I mean lows I mean solo the mid lows and we don't have any lows right now but if we go to the bass we do and what I'm gonna do is center that bass so it's focused and if we bring up waves, wave candy, then, um, and we right click and hit vector scope, then you can see how centered it is now. Let me go back to that. All right, and if we take that centering off, let me hit right click and hit vector scope again. So if it, if it turns to a different view, then just hit right click and hit vector scope. If we take that off, and look how crazy that bass is. And if I bring this out in vector scope mode and I do that again then you'll really see look look how crazy that bass is being it's going everywhere and the vector scope shows you all spectrums like of our separation field you know there's you know left right bottom left bottom right or what is so on you know I'm not the I don't know the best about it but I understand what I'm looking at and that's important because look at the bass it's just going all over and it's unfocused and you know it's not 
sure where to focus in the headphones and that creates a, a bad feel in your song and it creates a distortion and like an uneasy feeling so I'm gonna center our bass and our mids you know you can see them doing their thing out here and if you take that and separate it look how wide they are and then we could you know do the same thing and look how you know center they are and we don't want them like that and it's this part is subjective to what you think but um you know I'm gonna take off wave candy hit replace hit none um go back into maximus and I'm gonna go into the mids and see what we want to do with them so I'm gonna kind of center them a little bit and the highs I'm gonna separate and we don't have much highs until we get to the hi-hats maybe Now let's solo it, or take the solo off. And let's EQ it a little bit. Now this is light mastering. We're not doing much. I'm cutting off some of the high frequencies, like some of the high frequencies that we don't need, and then some of the lows as well that are muddy. Maybe take some of those off. Let's see where our lowest bass note hits. And it's right there. And you see that mud? Well, let's sharpen that. And bring that over there. And I just don't want that in there, that mud. So let's take that out. You can even boost up where it is and cut that mud out. And you can see us doing that here. And the way I'm doing that is I'm using my flywheel. And when you use your flywheel, you can see it changes right here which is the bandwidth of the of the uh, frequency of the curve. So I'm going to cut it down. I'm going to make it a stronger cut and take some of that mud out. And I'm going to pinpoint these higher frequencies and boost them. Um, the high frequencies could use a, use a little help. And I'm going to EQ it twice. So we're going to create strong points and low points. And I'm going to do the same thing with the bass. Cut that out again. Even more. Mastering is subjective to what you, you know, um, what you hear, what you want to hear, and what you like. And if, you know, if someone likes to put a lot of distortion on their track and they think it sounds good, then that sounds good to them. That's, and that's then that's a good song to them, and simple as that. So it's, um, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, they say. And, um, you know, I think we're pretty much done here, but, um, I want to add a couple more things, maybe. Um, I'm not too sure. Let's see. I think we're about done. We can add a compressor onto it. And make it sound a little bit more linear, you know, more uh, more together. So to do that, let's activate the threshold. Let's activate it by turning up the threshold to about 20, and let's turn up the ratio to four ish, and let's pull back that threshold until you know if we hear, you hear that, it's all like that's a crazy amount of compression. But let's bring it up to like where we want it. Let's bring it to that moving part. Now you can hear it taking a lot of the noise out, and what we're gonna do to like change that or to bring that back in is add the gain. So I'm gonna add it to where we need it. Okay, and it sounds a little heavy in the bottom and the lower frequencies, so I think I'm gonna cut some of that off. And I'm gonna add one more EQ, I think, and cut some of that lower frequency out. Let's lower that down a little 
this right here that's playing. I'm gonna center it. Um, I want the base to be a little brighter, a little better. We can distort the base if we want to. Just a little tiny bit. That's pretty much it for this so I mean thank you for watching I mean you can sit here and clone all this out and build your whole entire track out you know what I mean and arrange it and mix it export it all of that and you know over here it's up to four minutes so I mean you know we put together like however long a minute which is not bad so I'm just gonna let it play through So that's pretty much it. So thank you for watching. This is T Beats. Um, you know, this is just a basic cook up, um, FL native. So we're gonna get more and more in depth with techniques and all that other stuff. So you know, just keep watching, keep watching these playlists. Thank you for watching. Peace out.